So what I have here is um, a basic uh, photo frame that I picked up from Ikea of all places. And these were you know, a couple of bucks, I think two to four dollars or something like that. So uh, I'm going to remove this, the backing, remove everything from here. And then remove the glass. And this works perfectly as a little kind of a frame for a base. So I took a piece of plastic card uh, and I glued a bunch of little bits and pieces to this. And all I'm going to do is just slip this under here like so. Put in my piece of glass to hold it in place. Put this over here. Fold down, fold down my edges. To hold this in place. And I have a very, very simple looking, well, base for where I could paint this, uh, maybe add a little bit of a um, tarmac effect to this, and um, I'll have a nice little base. Speaking of tarmac effect, uh, I guess I'll do that uh, now. So, get my trusty little work board. And do these again. So put set these aside. Now my piece of plastic card ready to go. So this is pretty basic of a technique. And it starts off. Oops, if I don't drop my I don't need it. I can use my pair of scissors for this. So this is what my acrylic medium looks like. Now I have this kind of opened so it's right readily accessible. I'm just gonna dip my brush into this and liberally apply the acrylic medium to the surface. Now this acts, this is similar to uh, a clear coat of some sorts. This is acrylic based. It's uh, readily available at any of your, you know, home improvement stores like Home Depot and whatnot. And what this does is this gives it a nice little texture oh, when I'm done with this. But the, what the acrylic uh, medium will do is it allows it acts as an adhesive for the baking so baking powder, or actually, sorry, baking soda. I always get the two mixed up. You shouldn't get the two mixed up when you're baking. Horrible results happen if you do that. It's a little too bubbly, so I'm going to make sure I get rid of all the bubbles and make sure that this thing is nicely covered. So now that this is pretty nicely covered, again, I'm going to just try to get rid of the most of the little bubbles because I shook, this, shook the medium a little too much. Now once I have that, I'm going to set this aside, cover that, take my sifter tool, scoop out some of this baking soda, and just kind of sift it onto the surface. Now why, why, why I'm using a sifter is so I could get this as fine as possible. I don't want massive chunks of this stuff forming on this uh, plastic plate. That uh, helps it keep it to scale. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover the entire base with, or plastic with this. 
and you see that the sifter has kept all these hard or all these uh, bigger particles and pieces of dirt or twigs that invariable invariably uh, get stuck onto this batch of uh, baking soda that I've kept for years and years and years and I'll still reuse this for years to come now that that's done I'm just gonna leave this uh, to sit overnight okay now this uh, piece has had time to uh, cure overnight so I'm gonna crack open my box of baking soda carefully lift this up and drop it in here now to help with this I have a trusty little brush I get rid of most of this stuff So you can see that there's a little bit of a texture to it as I and once I paint this up this will give it this will pretty much finish this up now I can take a piece of sanding uh, pad and kind of clean up clean it up a little bit more some of the heavier spots so the black uh, base coat has dried overnight so I'm gonna go ahead and start painting the metallics put this tray over here now for some of the thruster parts I'm going to use a pale burnt metal. This is an alcohol. It's already pre-thinned uh, metallic paints and I really like this stuff because it's get a really nice metallic color to this. I'm drop some into the airbrush. <clears throat> I only need a very small amount. To stop my pressure and adjust my pressure accordingly. I'm going to drop this down to about 10 psi. Now my next um, next paint session will be to paint uh, this this part red because it's kind of inside here and I can easily mask off this once I have this painted. But first, since I want this uh, piece pre shaded, I'm gonna paint this white. Red's one of those colors that's pretty difficult to pre shade, and if you pre shade with black or a dark color and put the red over it, you get some really stark lines. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray a white over this, uh, appreciate it with the white, and then over this, uh, kind of lightly spray some red, which will pick up the bottom tones of the appreciate already on here, and it should help the red look kind of appreciated. So let's go with this first step, and I'm gonna just use 
<coughs> white face, or Mr. White Face as my white. Make sure this is nice and mixed up. And for pre-shading, the idea is to, again, spray a light tacky layer on here first, so it has something to stick on. Have my nice little tacky layer on here. And then the idea is to go into the center of the areas and spray, spray the color on. I'm using a lower PSI and I can go really close to the part. And all I'm doing is I'm just spraying in the center areas and kind of pushing out towards the edges. You see that, you see that the edges have a little bit of a darker tone to it. I'm going to do the same with the, this part. I'm focusing mostly on the middle and moving the airbrush out towards the edges as I apply more and more paint. Once I have this kind of um, <clears throat> shade like this or sprayed in the center, I'm going to take my airbrush and I'll hold it at a distance and just kind of spray heav or spray more openly. And this helps blend some of those areas together. So I spray from a distance, opening up the airbrush a little bit. And that should help blend some of those areas. And that's uh, pretty much all there is to the shading. This takes some practice. The more you paint, the better you get at it. So, these feet pieces, again, light misting coat. And I can paint the center areas. Pulling up the paint slowly.
and from a distance, do the blending. Now, your pr uh, how heavy you shade is entirely your preference. Okay, now that these parts have uh, dried for several hours, I can go ahead and spray my red over this. So, time to mix out the red. Uh, since, uh, just I usually mix this stuff straight out of the airbrush, or straight, in, straight into the airbrush. So, I have my thinner. And add my paint. Now, based off of this, I'm going to do a quick test and see how thick my paint is. But if it all goes well, I won't have to add paint or thinner. Again, this comes with uh, practice, and the more you build, the more you paint, the better you get at this. Or Do a quick uh, test spray. It's coming out just about right. So I'm going to go ahead and cap this. Grab my first part. And like just like before, a light missing coat. then go heavy. Now since I appreciated this earlier with the white and the, the dark gray of the, or the light gray of the um, primer, I don't want to spray too heavily that I diminish that effect. It's a very light coat that I'm spraying onto this because I want to keep that effect of where it's uh, shaded. And you can still see that it is kind of shaded to the dark areas. So that's effectively how I shade red by doing this. I'm not too concerned about the overspray because I'll mask this off and reprint or gray it out and then start start again with the rest of the uh, kit. So that's done. And go on to the feet piece parts. Again, nice light misting layer first. And as I move around to the different areas of the part, those first areas have had a little bit of time to dry. So you go in with a heavier spray. Get this color on there. Again, I'm going to try to spray fairly lightly, but making sure I get the parts completely painted, or at least the red areas completely painted. But I want to keep that shaded effect. It might have been a little bit more diminished here, but you can see a little bit of the edges have some dark tone, dark shading tones to it. Again, this is personal preference on shading, whether you want a little bit more heavy, heavily shaded part or lighter shaded. There's also scale to be uh, considered. So larger the scale, the, I guess the more shading you'll see on it.
some people don't even like shading. So, entirely up to you. And that should do it for the red pieces. Okay, my parts have uh, dried enough that I'm going to go ahead and start masking some of these parts off. And right here I have a couple of examples of masking I'd, or masking implements I'll use. I have my masking tape of different um, thicknesses. Uh, I have parafilm, which is, uh, I'll show you that how that works. And I have... Um, sticky tack which is basically your run-of-the-mill poster tack poster tack that you can find at any um, office supply store so first step is I was gonna use sticky tack and mask off this um, thruster area so all you have to do is ball up a little bit of sticky tack and stick it in there We take a toothpick of sorts and make sure it's nice, nice and covered. What also helps is if you're using a toothpick with the the um. Sticky tack is to moisten the sticky tack with some water and it won't stick too much to the sticky tack and you can use it to press it into tight little spots. Man, that's pretty much messed. This will go back onto a the board and I'll go on to something like this. Something like this where it's a square piece. Yeah, I can use a sticky tack and get a nice square uh uh, masking job on it but also you know this is more for organic uh, I, uh, things so I'm gonna measure out uh, it's about this 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 should work uh, peel off some of the masking tape A trusty shot glass from New York and I'm just gonna trim small pieces of masking tape again using uh, toothpick or bamboo skewer I'm going to use it to help me apply this onto the surface now, once I have that I can use this to also press the masking tape into this position and I'm just going to go ahead and mask the rest of it And this masking tape is fairly low tack, so it will come off fairly easy without peeling off paint. Now, if I didn't clean this part earlier with the um, the purple power stuff or degreaser, if I painted this and put the masking tape on, remove the masking tape, this will peel off all the paint down to the bare resin. So this is ready to go. 
And let's move along to something like this. So since this is more of a bigger piece, I could use um, the parafilm to do this. Now I like parafilm because it doesn't, it doesn't really stick to the plastic or resin, but it sticks very nicely to itself. And you'll see how this works. Let's pull the parafilm off. And this is kind of like saran wrap. It's going to kind of stretch it along the edges. And it kind of catches all catches along the edges. And as so long as it wraps around itself, it forms a nice little bond to itself. And it could get a nice fairly solid masking job with this. Now any time I have a little over mask like that, I can use my trusty toothpick tool and kind of press that down. And I also look at this and make sure you know I didn't miss any spots so I'm gonna take some more parafilm and fill this that area up. I'm going to start from this end. This kind of. Oops. Stretch it against and catch that. And I'm going to take my toothpick and press this down. Now I can always go in with you know, a little bit of. Let's see here. Do I have a bit of masking? Yeah. I'll take this piece of masking tape and I can mask this area off like so to make sure I have nice crisp masked off area And there I have this part masked off and at least this piece, this section of the foot ready for to go. Now I'll do the rest of the four or at rest of the three and I should be good.